Your Excellency Charles Saverin, Your Excellency Alberto Fernandez, Your Excellency Julio Barboza, Mr. Luis Lemes, my sister Carissa Etienne, Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends. Buenos dias, bonjour, and good morning. I apologize that I cannot be with you in person this morning, but I look forward to seeing you later this afternoon. The fact that you are once again able to meet in person is testament to how far you have come in the fight against COVID-19. I know how much you have suffered as a region and as, a, as member states. It's very pleasing to see that almost 70% of the region's population is vaccinated, including almost all health workers and 80% of older people. As a result, the number of weekly reported deaths is near its lowest since the pandemic began. As I have said over the past couple of weeks, we have never been in a better position to end the COVID-19 pandemic as a global health emergency. After two and a half years in a long dark tunnel, we're just beginning to glimpse the light at the end. But we're not at the end yet. We're still in the tunnel. And there are many obstacles that can trip us up if we don't tread carefully. Vaccination gaps, low rates of testing and sequencing, and lack of access to antivirals in some countries puts the entire region at risk. We continue to urge all member states to prioritize the vaccination of all health workers and all older people on the way to achieving the target of 70% coverage in all countries. WHO has recently published a set of six short policy briefs which outline the essential actions all countries can take to reduce transmission and save lives. We urge you to use these briefs to reassess and readjust your policies to protect those most at risk, treat those who need it, and save lives. The pandemic is always evolving and so must the response in every country. Excellencies, I thank you all for putting your trust in me to serve you as a Director General for another five years. At the World Health Assembly in May, I outlined five priorities for the next five years as we work together to recover from the setbacks of the pandemic and drive progress towards the triple billion targets and the sustainable development goals. Promoting health by addressing the root cause of disease and creating the conditions for good health and well-being. Providing health by reorienting health systems towards primary health care at the foundation of universal health coverage. Protecting health by strengthening the global architecture for health emergency preparedness response and resilience, powering health by harnessing science, research, innovation, data, and digital technologies, and performing for health by building a stronger WHO that delivers results and is empowered to play its leading role in global health. It's important to underline that these five priorities do not replace the 13th general program of work or the triple billion targets. They are more about how together we will reach those targets. The five priorities have much synergy with your agenda this week, including the five priorities of the policy for recovering progress towards the SDGs. I thank all member states for the historic commitment you made at this year's World Health Assembly to gradually increase assess contributions to 50% of the base budget over the next decade. Maintaining momentum is vital. At the first step toward the sustainability comes with the proposed 20% increase on assess contributions in the 2024-25 budget. As you know, even before the pandemic, 
we had already made major improvements in effectiveness and efficiency through the transformation journey that we have been on over the past five years. Building on the lessons of the pandemic, we're committed to continuing that journey and to making WHO even more effective and efficient. In particular, our focus in the coming years is to significantly strengthen our country offices to support greater country capacity and greater country ownership, especially by strengthening the health workforce of every member state. Excellencies, over the past five years, I have had the honor of working shoulder to shoulder with my sister Carissa in our shared mission to serve the people of the Americas. Carissa, thank you for everything you have done and everything you have achieved. I will miss you. As I know, the region's member states and the staff of PAHO will too. At this chapter of your life and career closes, a new one opens with a story that's yet to be written. I have no doubt that wherever life takes you, your professionalism, your knowledge, experience and expertise, your energy and your commitment to service will continue to make a difference in the lives of the people you work with and for. And remember, one is WHO, always WHO. So you're still WHO family. I wish you the very best. As member states elect a new regional director this week, I give you my commitment that I will work with whomever you choose to promote, provide, protect, power, and perform for health. I thank you. Muchas gracias. Merci beaucoup.